I didn't necessarily set out to make a YouTube channel with a lot of gardening related videos, but this year being what it is, I have been home a lot and I live in a duplex, so I don't have a lot of land or a big yard to garden in, um, but I do have two somewhat small balconies and I have an extremely small space in the front yard and in the backyard where I can grow flowers, plants, food. And so I thought maybe I would show you what I've done with those spaces. I am definitely a plant lover and I think I'll also do a tour of my house plants at some point. But today it's one of the last days of June, it's almost July, and things have really started to take off in my balcony garden, container garden spaces. So I thought I would show you what I've done in the hopes of if anyone's interested in starting growing but maybe has a really small space like I do, to kind of see what's possible. I find that these gardens are a really important space for me to retreat to during the week um, on a lunch break to, just to, you know, get a change of scenery from my desk. And on the weekend, I really enjoy them because I read out here, I, you know, relax with a glass of wine out here, and I also, um, I enjoy painting or drawing out here as well. So I find them to be a great, you know, both relaxing environments, but also a source of creative inspiration. I think this is going to be a pretty long video, so I'm just going to get into it right now. Starting with here, this is my front balcony. It's about three and a half feet by nine feet, so pretty small. And I have probably 40 or 50 different plants here, so let's go. One of the things I've been struggling with on this balcony this year is I used to have a tree right in front of it and it's been so hot this year. Not only has our weather been hot, but because there's no longer kind of a tree providing this barrier for late afternoon sunlight, a lot of my plants that I normally grow up here have died, unfortunately. Um, so it's been, it's been a bit of a challenge up here. You'll see later, I have a back balcony that gets more shade. I have a backyard that gets more shade. And even my front yard down below is a little bit easier to grow things in. I have a little pot of morning glories. Now by August, these will trail up these wires here. They're cable internet wires. All the way up the brick front of the building. They'll go pretty high up. Uh, they'll be reaching towards the sky and they'll start to blossom. I have one that is already almost as tall as I am, so they grow really quickly. Now, hanging off this little ledge is a jasmine plant. I actually overwinter this inside, and by the way, behind this is my neighbor's balcony. There's nothing there, as you can tell. Um, so, this is a jasmine plant that um, I, I overwinter and it kind of goes dormant in winter, although it doesn't lose all of its leaves. And it just came into its blossoming stage this week. I grow as many flowers as I can in here. So this year I've had a bit of a challenge because last winter I put a bird feeder on this hook. Well, that was a mistake because it attracted rodents um, I'm not sure if it was a mouse or a rat, but something has been living either in this container or underneath the floorboards of the balcony for months now, and it does still visit because I think it has food stored here. Um, so it killed a lot of my seedlings, and I ended up buying some plant starts and plopping them in <laughs> because they were stronger and could survive the mouse digging through them. Oh, so I do think this seed survived. I believe this might be a hyssop. I'm not sure. Um, but I bought a Cleome start. It has grown a lot since I bought it and it just started blossoming yesterday. I'm really excited about that. I have Yarrow, which actually 
um, I had planted last year in this very container and it came back and is blossoming this year. I have a sunflower. This actually came from the bird seed. The, the um, mouse, rat, whatever, <laughs> must have missed this seed and it's, it's growing. I don't know what it looks like because it's a bird seed sunflower. Behind it, I have a Nicotiana. Nicotiana, I think it's called. It's a relative of tobacco. It's a flower. Um, I have one plant here, one plant here. I planted it from seed, um, and it's done pretty well so far. I This is new to me this year, so I'm not sure when it will blossom, but it seems to have enjoyed the heat we've got. This is a perennial type of phlox. Um, I just planted it this year. I think it will blossom in August. I'm not totally sure though. In the corner here, this is the only shaded spot in this entire balcony. Um, I planted a relative of a bluebell. It's called Blue Clips and it should blossom all summer and into the fall. So I have this really pretty petunia, which I bought for a hanging basket. I don't have a hanging basket, long story. Um, but it's been doing pretty well in that container. This is lemon verbena, which I love. I had lemon verbena tea when I went to Morocco and I've just loved the plant ever since. So over here, this is just an Ikea chair. I've had a couple of years. Um, <laughs> also an Ikea table. I've had a few years, I painted it. So I have a really pretty geranium. I just found it this spring. Um, a dragon begonia, which I bought today because it's a flower I know can stand the heat. This is one of my favorite plants. This is a new addition this summer, which is a scented geranium. And this is a rose, let's see, it's called the Dr. Livingston. It has a rose-like smell, but it has these beautiful lacy leaves. It's flowering right now. I couldn't be happier with it. It just smells amazing. It's one of my favorite plants. Over here, I have a lavender plant that just came into bloom a few days ago. And this is also one of my favorite plants slash flowers of all time and smells. I love it. Um, I can't seem to have lavender grow over the winter where I live. It's just too cold. I've tried and it doesn't work, <laughs> basically. So I have to buy the lavender plants every year. This year, unfortunately, it was extremely hard to find lavender. So I was really, really happy to find this plant. Um, it is not the usual. I usually grow English lavender or French lavender. It is a hybrid, I believe. So on this balcony, I have two of these um, flower containers. These are some of the first containers I started growing flowers in, actually, on my balcony. Um, this year it's struggled because of the heat. I haven't been able to grow what I normally do. Um, so just today I bought this plant. This is the only plant in my entire garden. I don't know what it is. And then I have rosemary, which tolerates <laughs> the heat pretty well. I actually have these sweet peas. Um, and they're doing well despite the heat, which is really surprising. I have a zinnia, it's not doing so well. And I have some Spanish lavender that it's almost done blooming. So I have two tomato plants up here. I think it's actually too hot up here to grow all of my tomatoes. So you'll see most of them in the back. This tomato is one of my best so far this year. It's a new one to me this year. It's called either Dr. Wyke or Dr. Witchy, I'm not sure. This one has tons of flowers <laughs> um, and it started flowering pretty early. It's an heirloom variety and it's the only like full size tomato I'm growing. So this is another one of my favorite cherry tomatoes. It's called the Isis Candy Cherry Tomato. I grew it last year. It's also doing very well up here. I just grow them in large terracotta pots. And one important thing to point out, I find tomatoes in pots actually do better if they are grown with basil. So this spring, I actually bought one um, Greek basil, it was called, plant. And the Greek basil plant actually came with multiple st different plants in one container. So I broke up the plants and I've grown them on, and honestly, they're all huge. 
basically when they're grown with tomatoes, they improve the flavor of the tomato, but conversely, the tomato also improves the flavor of the basil. I also have a, I'm not sure which kind of basil this is. I think this is just reg regular Genovese basil I grew from seed. Um, same down here. I have multiple different kinds of mint and patchouli. So this I believe is a mojito mint it's called. This is, I think that's just spearmint. Um, this is my patchouli plant. I love the smell of patchouli. I know it's not everyone's favorite, but I was really pleasantly surprised to discover this plant last year. And I tried overwintering it and actually did really well inside all winter. I was really surprised. I did have it under a light kind of went dormant but it came back as you can see as soon as I set it outside when the weather was warm. This is another Cleome. Cleomes like to suffer. I have it in a small container and it's you know blossoming unlike the other ones I showed you. Down here I have morning glories. So this is a variety of morning glories. Some I'm trying this year, others were seeds I'd saved so I'm not sure what's coming up right now but my goal is to have them climb all the way up here this is a veg trug. I have one in the front, one in the back. This is like the herb variety. It's not very deep. Um, so I do mainly just grow herbs and lettuce. So this year I've struggled because most things have gotten way too hot. <laughs> Except for, got some really tall peas up here. Um, so in here I have oregano I grew from seed, thyme I grew from seed, Roselle, which I direct so just to see if that would grow. It's not very big yet. Um, some zinnias that died but seem to be coming back. Strawberry, that's an alpine type of strawberry. This is a garden sage I grow as a plant, or I bought as a plant. Um, more strawberries, they grow like weeds. I've pulled a lot out. This is a holy basil, which um, I actually grew a plant indoors all winter in my arrow garden that I had grown from seed, saved from a plant I had last year. Then what I did was I propagated a lot of plants off of the arrow garden plant, and then I planted them outside. I have some cilantro that's bolted. I have little seedlings, which I think those are lettuce and zinnias, but they're pretty small. I have a bush bean right there on the right, and I have some alpine strawberries on the left. I have another holy basil plant right there in the corner. Yes, they are ripe. <laughs> so in the middle, I have a yarrow plant. I did plant that from seed and it's taken over. I've actually divided it, but it keeps growing. Zinnia is next to it, which I'm hoping they can hold their own and not get choked out by this plant. Um, and then I've got kind of an empty space here because things, again, have not grown in this heat very well. Surprisingly, this lettuce has survived. I believe this is a Four Seasons lettuce. In the corner here, I have a dill plant. This dill I actually grew in the arrow garden and then I planted out directly into the ground without basically doing anything. So dill is enjoying the heat here, I guess. <laughs> I find it's a really pretty flower. So the last container I have out front here is this smart pot. Now I am doing a little experiment this year um, and growing corn. This is actually a type of popcorn. It's a blue popcorn. I have three plants in here and they're actually doing pretty well. They're pretty tall. I'm doing the, I think it's called the Four Sisters method of gardening based on Native Americans who would grow corn squash, beans, and sunflowers all together. Um, this might be a little ambitious for a 20 gallon smart pot, but I'm, you know, seeing how it goes. This is a type of squash. It's a type of butternut squash. It's actually French. Um, so that was just for fun to see how it would go. So I'm growing, I think it's four different kinds of beans. I have a type of runner bean, like a pink flowered runner bean. I have a Asian uh, noodle bean and I have a Appalachian uh, greasy grits bean, I think is what it's called. And those will trail up. I have the cord all ready to go up my brick wall there <laughs> to my little wind chime decoration area. And I do have a nasturtium plant as well because 
they tend to love growing up here. Welcome to my front yard and I'm going to be overexposed because the sun just came out. Um, so instead of showing you the beautiful YouTube or Instagram version, I'm going to show you my real front yard, which is extremely small and shared with my mess, my neighbor's messes. So, you know, you can plant with what you have basically is my message here. So in this tiny space, I live in a duplex. So I basically have some front steps and a almost non-existent entrance to myself and that's where I have put plants of course why not I have a couple of smart pots and let's look what's in each of them. in here I have a few flowers that have been struggling and I have a pumpkin which has sprawled out across the front yard there um, so that's going to be interesting to see what happens in this smart pot, I have a few flowers I tried planting and a melon that never came up. I have a zinnia here. I have some seeds. This one's called Love in a Mist, but it hasn't blossomed, so I'm not quite sure. I thought it was actually supposed to blossom in spring, and it hasn't, so I'm not sure how that's going to go. Um, I do have another melon that I put in here, but it has been eaten by something. But that's okay, and I've got a sunflower. In this smart pot, um, I have, again, a couple of flowers that have been struggling. This is a nasturtium and this is a nasturtium planted at exactly the same time. You never know what's going to happen. I do have a cucumber. This is called a Lebanese cucumber and I have already gotten a few cucumbers off of it. And in fact, there's another one coming right there. Um, this one should be ready in a couple of days. And I'm just kind of letting it sprawl in between. This is actually a borage plant that reseeded from last year, and it is growing in a tiny little crack in between the cement. So this is a ground cherry right here. This is my fifth smart pot that's in this front yard. I did buy it from a little plant start because I find it's very difficult to grow from seed. Pretty prolific. It got a very good start. These, I believe, are some cosmos in here that I forgot I planted. So along the sidewalk, getting into the dirt here, <laughs> um, I planted some cosmos. Behind the cosmos, I have a yarrow plant. Now this is a perennial. It's a flower. It actually natively grows around here. Um, I purchased this plant, but uh, I, I actually purchased it a few years ago. It was tiny. It was like the size of one of these stalks and it has, you know, just grown in magnitude. These two are some extra tomato plants. They were extremely small and I popped them in these probably two small clay pots. Um, I didn't have room for them elsewhere, well, but uh, I just thought, you know, why not? I didn't feel like killing them. This is kind of my perennial garden because it's in the ground. Never mind the dry grass, we don't have a sprinkler, and it was hot and dry for many weeks, so there you go. <laughs> I had to carry a lot of buckets of water down here to water this. Um, so this is a peony. It was blossoming about two weeks ago. I have some Coreopsis, which didn't come up for two years. <laughs> Not quite sure why, but they came back this year more borage that reseeded from last year. I didn't plant that this year. This is a butterfly weed, it's called. It's actually a type of milkweed, uh, which is what monarch butterflies lay their eggs on. I love the flowers and, you know, bees, butterflies, everyone loves, <laughs> everyone loves these flowers. They're just coming out for the first time. They'll blossom through August. And, um, oh, well, I would say until early August. I have never unfortunately seen monarch butterfly eggs on here, but there's more and more awareness about monarch butterflies. And I, um, I've seen more monarch butterflies in recent years than I ever have before. So hoping to eventually get some monarch eggs on there. 
I have a few other flowers. I do forget the names of these. Um, these will come up a little later in July. They're yellow. One is yellow, one is purple. They also attract butterflies. I have a blueberry plant. The blueberries are just ripening now. I'm really excited about those. They're a very small type of blueberry, but they're very hardy. This is an echinacea, and that will come out later in July uh, and blossom until, well, pretty much through September. I believe that's a kind of pinkish purple one, if I recall. <laughs> More borage that reseeded. Um, I actually had some random melons come up. This is kind of a weedy area that belongs to my neighbor, and I sort of planted seeds anyway. Borage reseeded down here. I threw in some melon seeds. Um, more borage. There are daylilies that were planted by the landlord here. And some, some oats and wheat actually came up because I had a bird feeder upstairs. And these just are from the bird seed that fell last winter, which I think are actually quite pretty. But anyway, that's kind of my neighbor's side. I sort of just gorilla gardening over there. This is a shrub called sumac. It's native around here. It's very beautiful in fall. It has beautiful foliage and um, that volunteered. That came up and some people buy them and plant them as decorative shrubs and I thought I just kind of cleared some weeds around it and thought I'd give it a chance to grow. It'll be really pretty in the fall. And then I've got some wild grapevines growing around here. I believe they're a Concord variety. They actually tend to grow everywhere. They're basically a weed. They choke out my other flowers and plants and they don't ever really produce grapes. So I do have to keep that trimmed. And the landlord of the building doesn't like it growing everywhere. So to make sure that they don't come over here and just start chopping everything, I keep the grapevine trimmed. Welcome to my backyard. I am really excited about this space. So this is basically part of a kind of shared backyard for everyone who lives in a row of three duplexes. Um, however, in past years, the space I'm standing in right now and I'm about to show you has just been basically a pile of weeds. And so this year I decided to come out and plant some plants. Why not, right? So let me show you what I did with this formerly basically void of a space. So the space I'm about to show you is basically underneath my fire escape. There's a small corner. So I had a few spare containers to put on this cement area here. And oh, by the way, this cement area is so funny because I dropped some lettuce seeds and the lettuce this is my best lettuce plant <laughs> that I have. It grew up in between the cracks. So out here I have a couple of spare containers that I had. Um, I had a smart pot that I had ordered. Uh, this was on sale actually and I put some kale in it for the fall. I have a smart pot with another Lebanese cucumber which I think the cucumbers will be ready soon. Yeah that one's about ready I would say. This, I believe, is a honeywort. I grew it last year. It's not doing so well this year. I think this is my only plant that I have. A nasturtium, another kale plant, and a zinnia. Um, this, unfortunately, I had a hydrangea in here for several years, and it died. So I just put some bean um, seeds in there a couple of days ago, and they're just germinating now. I have a petunia plant that is very leggy. And then, in here I have an extra cleome that was pretty small, but I think it'll get big enough to blossom soon. I have some uh, bachelor buttons. They grow really well in containers. Another nasturtium. A love in a mist, which hasn't blossomed yet. So now I go into the ground area. And basically this was a weedy area with very poor soil. There was a lot of like cement and old rocks and actually old 
um, coal. So my building dates back to the Victorian era and it used to be heated by coal. And I don't know if that was just like I was unearthing a hundred year old coal pile. I'm not quite sure what was going on back here, but anyway. Um, I did a lot of digging. I added a little bit of soil, but surprisingly not too much. I wasn't sure anything would grow. Um, obviously it has. So one thing I did to try to build up the soil a little bit was I planted a lot of this clover. Um, that actually helps build soil. So you'll see the clover everywhere. It's not a weed. I planted it. Here I planted a couple of different beans. Um, I decided to see how they would do in the ground, and they're doing okay. I actually think they like containers better, surprisingly. So this is an Asian noodle bean. Um, this isn't a bean, this is a morning glory. Another Asian noodle bean. Um, this is a zinnia actually coming up. This I bought this year. This is a lilac bush. A lot of my neighbors have them back here. So I figured it would do well. I bought it as a bare root plant and it's just getting established this year. Um, and more beans. I think those are a um, pink flowering runner bean. I have a Cosmo that's actually coming up from seed. So that's exciting. I have a bunch of plants. I don't know if I planted this or if it's a weed, to be honest with you. Um, I found a tomato back here. This is a volunteer. I didn't plant that. Um, a lot of my neighbors grow tomatoes, so birds tend to eat the tomatoes and drop the seeds around. And so that's a surprise tomato coming up. I have another Cleom. I find they don't do as well in the ground as they do in a pot, but that one seems pretty happy. On the other side here, I planted this lupine, which I love these flowers and it just came into flower this week. I'm so excited about this. I really, really love these flowers. They're very hardy. They're beautiful, I think. These are my best performing beans in the ground so far. These beans, oops, almost reached the stairs there. Um, these are greasy grits beans. They've loved the hot weather. They're an Appalachian variety, so no doubt they love them. They seem to like my rocky soil and my, um, well, my coal-filled soil. That makes sense, doesn't it? They enjoy the hot weather. So what else do I have in here? So this is called blue tansy. I don't think it is. I think blue tansy is ironically a yellow flower. I'm not sure what this is then but it's really beautiful. It's actually very fragrant and it's a prolific kind of weed-like flower, <laughs> but pollinators seem to love it. In fact, there's a little native bee on that one. Oh, he just flew away. Um, I have a couple of zinnias mixed in here, as you can see, and I have a lot of blue forget-me-nots. I've tried to grow these for years in containers. They never grow in containers and I scattered some seeds down here and they seem pretty happy. This yarrow is basically a weed, <laughs> um, but it's pretty, <laughs> so obviously I left it. It's been reaching for the sun because the, yeah, it doesn't get as much sun back here. Here's a Cosmo that I planted from a start. Here's a borage that reseeded from a previous year up on my balcony. Um, actually, here's another borage plant. It got knocked over, I think, by some rain we had. What else do we have? Oh yes, this maple tree I actually found growing with the grapevine in my front yard. And um, I thought it was a shame because it's a beautiful tree. We don't have a lot of trees <laughs> in the neighborhood. A lot of them have been cut down because they've gotten too big and have tangled with power lines. So um, I decided to transplant this back here. I don't think it can live here forever because it's right underneath the stairs. Um, but if we end up buying a property someday. I would actually like to probably transplant it again into its forever home. So right now I'm considering this like its little nursery. I forgot the rhubarb. I bought a rhubarb plant this year and it's just getting established right now. Um, so I can't harvest anything off of it this year, but hopefully it'll be ready to harvest next year. And then I actually stuck in two lavender plants that were dying and they've come back to life. I don't know if they'll blossom again. I think they actually might. So I scattered a lot of seeds down here. I don't even know what everything is necessarily. Some maybe weeds. This looks like a Cosmo, a type of Cosmo. 
Um, I'm not sure what this is. That might be a weed. This is a lemon balm, which I found. I grew this up on my balcony above this a few years ago. And I think it was growing down here on its own. And I had never noticed it before because this part of the yard was filled with junk other years. Um, so I found it and it's obviously doing really well. So this is a shrub I bought this spring. It's a Hascap Berry, it's called. Um, you have to have two because it's not self-pollinating. So over here is the other one. It's another Hascap Berry. Um, it does okay in the shade, so I stuck it back here. And it does get sun in the morning in the summer. So um, yeah, it's just getting established this year and I hope it will do well other years. It should actually produce fruit next year. They never get that large, if I understand correctly. And um, again, if I move, I think that's one I would take with me. Behind it, um, this area is pretty shady. So right now I just have some clover and I do have a morning glory that has decided that it will live here, even though morning glories prefer full sun. Finally, I have an old planter. The bottom actually broke so I could no longer keep it on my balcony. So I brought it down here and it's basically saying in the dirt, it has no bottom. It kind of adds a nice feature to this little corner. Behind it is just an old wine barrel actually. Um, this is a wine barrel that most of it has decomposed so I can't really show you the barrel part and ferns are growing out of it, and some kind of weed that I'm not sure what this is. I planted a bunch of nasturtiums, which are doing extremely well. Um, I had an extra tomato, which isn't so happy. The one that came up over there as a volunteer is much happier. Here, I have some cilantro that was dying on my balcony, and it's much happier here. This is called the Vietnamese cilantro. This is a bean, a bush bean, I have another bush bean here and I have a, <laughs> this is a pumpkin that I thought was dying and I threw in this corner and it is perfectly happy now. So I'm, this is not an ideal space to grow a pumpkin in. It's very small, so I'm not sure how well it's going to do. I'm hoping I can force the pumpkin to grow right up there. And so that's my backyard corner. I've got a fence. Um, these are neighbors' backyards. So it's a space that's about five feet by five feet um, and yeah I just kind of threw seeds in to see what would happen and so far so good. It's a really pretty space and it's really nice to come back here in the, oops, in the middle of the day um, when it's really hot out front and upstairs. It's quite cool back here. It's very nice. All right, welcome to my back balcony. So up here, where I get to the stairs in the first place, um, to get down there, I have put a little row of smart pots. So this smart pot on the end, first of all, I have a lovely little sweet pea. This is my, my favorite kind of sweet pea. It grows so well. Um, in here, I planted a few flower seeds. I don't think they're doing so well because there is a lot of grass in here, but I want to grow the grass. This is called sweet grass, and you can use it um, at the end of the year. You can dry it and you can smudge with it almost like you could smudge white sage. It was used by Native Americans to clear and purify spaces. So I'm really surprised the sweet grass is growing really well in containers and I also have some of it down below. Here is a row of tomatoes in containers. I do find tomato plants grow really well in containers. So here's a cherry tomato. This is a sunrise bumblebee. It just started blossoming the last couple of days. I'm really happy. This is a really delicious one. I love it. So this is a Isis cherry tomato. Um, this one's not blossoming quite yet, although I see a few on their way. This one is blossoming profusely and there's a story behind this one. 
Last year, a plant came up with my hydrangea bush that was growing in a container and it ended up being a tomato. I did not plant the tomato, so I believe it came from probably carried by a bird who ate a tomato and dropped it out in my hydrangea bush. Um, it, I think the tomato growing, I let it grow, I didn't pull it out. I think it killed my hydrangea, but the tomatoes were prolific. The plant was big and healthy. Um, and I thought the cherry tomatoes that came out, they were kind of an orange cherry tomato. Um, I thought they were really good, so I saved the seeds from the mother plant, and lo and behold, this year once again, this one so far is doing really well. It's probably my best <laughs> tomato plant. Down here, I have a smart pot with two tomatoes in it. This isn't necessarily recommended, it's just these were two spare tomatoes that I had no room for and I felt bad killing, so I popped them in here. I'm also growing nasturtiums, basil, um, there's a borage plant that was a volunteer that I transplanted. It's There's probably too much in this container. It's about a 10 gallon, no, it's either seven or 10 gallon container. I wouldn't recommend gardening like this, but so far everything seems fine. So you never know. So behind Tomato Alley, I have a Cleum that I bought as a start. And I have a couple of flower seeds that I planted as seeds that were struggling and now they're kind of doing okay. Then on this little shelf I have a couple of miscellaneous things I grow every year. This is actually wormwood. It's been used historically as a medicinal plant. I use it um, to make smudge bundles with at the end of the year. I dry them and use them as a smudge stick. Um, these are two Christmas cactuses, this one and this one. The Christmas cactuses go dormant in the summer and I have found I get the best blooms from them if I let them go outside and just enjoy the outdoor elements all summer. I'll move them in when it starts getting cold in early October and they will start blossoming the extra sunflower. That's my little alley. Oh, I have a rose bush. Now this rose bush is really interesting. Um, first of all, I love roses. I can't believe I can grow roses in containers, but I can. This has actually overwintered two winters in this ceramic pot, which goes against every rule of gardening. Um, you're not supposed to be able to do that, but it does just fine. It's a perfectly healthy plant. Um, so it's coming to its end, the end of its little blooming phase. It blooms mainly in late June for about two weeks. The roses are beautiful. I dry the petals. Um, yeah, it's a great plant. I love it. This is a scented geranium. This is a lemon scented geranium. I actually had it inside uh, in winter for two years now. It had gotten very leggy this spring, so I cut most of the leggy branches off and it's been putting out some new growth. I just came around the corner from that tomato alley and I'm now in kind of the other L part of my back balcony. Uh, this is where I have the most plants. It gets a lot of morning sunlight and then it's shaded most of the afternoon. So I do keep that in mind when figuring out what plants to grow back here. So welcome to my raised garden bed. By the way, down here, I just have a little plant nursery with some plants that are struggling. This is a raised planter bed, which has been doing really well the past couple of years. I basically fit as much as possible in it and kind of see what happens, <laughs> as you can tell. So the first thing I plant out here in the spring are peas. And I made a mistake this year. I got a magnolia pea. That's what this is called. It's a magnolia pea and it is way too tall for this raised bed. I didn't realize it would grow that tall. Um, it was ironic because I was watching another <laughs> garden tour on YouTube recently and the gardener <laughs> made the same exact mistake as me. What can you do? I planted a tomato. I didn't think these peas were going to work out so I thought it would have plenty of space. It's too crowded. Don't crowd a tomato like this. 
don't yeah don't do that <laughs> and here I do have some basil growing um, this is Thai basil I grew it from seed this is a strawberry that has just taken over I pulled out so many strawberries in here um, this is another type of basil I grew from seed I have some cilantro down here which loves the shade and it's fine with being crowded I have a bush bean which is also not super happy being crowded and in fact this is another bush bean I don't think they're gonna do well um, I have this is a carrot I have carrots scattered throughout here um, this is dill it's totally fine being crowded I planted that from seed um, strawberries which they just they're kind of like weeds <laughs> for me all right so these are some violas that I planted from seed this past winter I believe I started them inside in January I really like them um, and they're fine with being crowded they're edible actually they grow really well if you have like an herb bed um, this is a mustard green I've harvested most of it for my guinea pigs this is a lettuce that just got too hot it hasn't grown very well um, this is one of my favorite plants holy basil I have a few carrots those are fine and I have a zinnia that just came up which I think is beautiful and this is another plant that grows really well with like kind of a an herb garden seems to be happy growing with herbs um, I have another lemon scented geranium in here which is just beautiful smells great I have a couple of mustard greens left over from the spring that have gone to seed this is a plant that I kind of just bought last weekend. Um, I was buying two plants from a seller. She was like, you can get a third for about the same price. <laughs> I think she was trying to clearance them out. This is called Mexican Sage. It's really beautiful. It attracts bees and pollinators and it kind of like fit in really nicely with this garden bed, I thought. Um, another bush bee in this one will be fine. It's kind of doing better than the other two. Um, and some peas, some more peas that just took over. Oh, this is a radish. This spring I didn't get any radishes. Usually radishes do great in my raised beds, but it got too hot too quick. Um, so they all bolted. I left this one because I think the flowers are really pretty. So this is Smart Pot and inside it I have a pumpkin growing. Um, yesterday my husband asked can you really grow a pumpkin here because there's no room and my answer was I don't know I fully expect this plant to take over because it grows like a foot every day this is a New England pie pumpkin I believe it's called um, it took over this container which is fine I also grew corn my corn's doing better in front uh, I don't think it liked being steamrolled by the pumpkin I do have some nasturtiums that are starting to grow around the pumpkin they got way too hot nasturtiums don't like to be too hot so my plants haven't done super super well they haven't blossomed yet normally they're blossoming by now I also have some beans growing in here the beans are doing fine they're totally coexisting with the pumpkin I believe these are the greasy grits beans as well because they look like my greasy grits downstairs. So next to the smart pot I have a lip container with morning glories and I'm just growing those to kind of grow up and cover this ugly black rail that goes all the way up. So over here this is a gooseberry and I think I made a mistake by planting it in a container. I don't know that it's gonna last well in a container so pretty soon I think I'm gonna transplant it downstairs into the ground so it can get established. Oh there it is. There it is. Hi gooseberry. With the gooseberry I planted mint which you can't plant mint with other things. It'll take over just as this one has done. However, I have two guinea pigs that love this mint. This is called orange mint. This is their favorite food on earth. Um, so I am harvesting it like every day to keep it under control and feeding it to my guinea pigs. Um, they're happy, I'm happy. I also have a calendula. Now my calendulas have not done that well this year, but this one here in the corner is doing okay um this is a yellow raspberry it's very cold hardy so that's probably why it survived the winter and it is just so prolific i get so much fruit off of it it's not quite time to harvest it but as you can see there are so many bunches 
of fruit coming. I'm really excited. It's very sweet. It's really delicious. Um, way better than anything you could buy in a store. Next to it, this is a little experiment from this year. Um, this is my water garden. What I did was I bought a galvanized um, pail, as you can see. I fill it with water all the time. Um, so I have a couple of containers of flowers in here. I have marshmallow. This is not doing super well this year. Usually it gets much taller by now. It blooms in August though, so it still has time. Beautiful flowers, I really love it. Um, there's a little container over here. It looks like it's in the water, but it's not. This is a petunia. It's kind of just trailing <laughs> over to the water. This is a papyrus plant, which is gorgeous. Loved it. Um, and this plant, I moved around a bit. It's not necessarily an aquatic plant. It's a type of oxalis. I think it's called like copper oxalis and it seems to like its feet a little bit wet it seems pretty happy that way much and I have the same thing with the marshmallow over there I did try to grow water lilies and a few other aquatic plants but they never germinated pots near my water garden I'm trying in this pot <laughs> I'm trying to germinate white sage so far I don't think it's working I have like 30 seeds in there they're not coming up <laughs> um, this pot was very empty for many months and all of a sudden I got a plant. I don't know if it's a weed, but um, I'm trying to germinate scented geraniums and it might be a scented geranium, which if it is, I'm super excited about that. In this container, this is a laurel or a bay tree and I'm super excited to have found this. I found this at the farmer's market and I asked the woman selling it if it will grow inside over the winter and she said yes. So she said to put it in a pot, let it grow outside in the summer and just move it inside for the winter, which is my plan. So that's something I've never grown before. I'm excited to try it. Next up is my herb tower. So I, as the name suggests, I mainly grow herbs. I grow some strawberries. They grow really well in this little container. And yes, I do have rocks and crystals around. That's a rose quartz and a quartz that I found last year. Right now, I have a few strawberries coming along like that guy. Five strawberry plants in here. I have miscellaneous herbs. I have some oregano. This I actually grew in the arrow garden last fall. I transplanted it to a terracotta pot. I kept it inside all winter and then I planted it out here. It's super happy. I have some thyme. I also have a roselle it's called. It is related to the hibiscus family. The roselle will create really pretty flowers towards the end of summer. Okay, I do have one tomato over here, and this normally gets sun for a number of hours in the morning. This is a Napa Chardonnay tomato. It was actually the first one to flower. I had an unfortunate incident where the first <laughs> branch of flowers and little tomatoes that were coming along broke off. Next to it, I have, this is called an ahi pepper. It's actually a pepper, a hot pepper that is native to South America. It's from Peru. Um, I tried growing it last year, it did not do well, but I think because of the heat and dry weather, it has done really well this year. I actually have two. I found that it seems to like growing with a friend and it's just in this ceramic or terracotta pot. The pollinators seem to like it. Down here I have a bowl of salad greens which is going to seed basically. Um, I have a impatient which has gotten too hot. It's impatient with the heat. <laughs> this is a jalapeno pepper plant. I grew or I, I bought this as a start. This guy I actually grew from seed believe it or not. I do have one basket um, that overhangs. This is my neighbor's yard down there. Um, and I fill this with ivy geraniums, which remind me of the year I went to Paris with my mom because so many of the homes in Paris were growing these. 
Okay, finally I have this little bistro table. It's usually not this covered. I can sit out here and eat if I want. Uh, last weekend I was painting out here. It was really, really nice. But today I set out my coffee plants, which are normally a house plant. Um, so I actually grew these from seed as well. I'm really excited. They're doing pretty well. <laughs> I'm so surprised. So they mostly live in the house, but I think they kind of like getting some fresh air from time to time, so set them out here. This is one of my prized scented geraniums. I'm so excited about this. I and this is a lime scented one. If you rub the leaves, it smells so good. It's actually edible, or not necessarily edible, but you can make teas. You can consume the leaves if they're like in a tea form. This is another scented geranium. I actually got this last year and I overwintered it inside. It stayed pretty happy most of the year, so that was great. It's called a Plymouth scented geranium. Its scent is a little bit more of a rose scented. It is just amazing. I can't wait to, you know, see how these grow. This one has doubled in size since last year. This is a wonderful petunia that I have enjoyed so much. It has been a trooper through the hot weather, which is great. I have a sedum. And I have this flower, which is normally an indoor plant, but I put it out for the summer because it's much happier outside in the summer. Last but not least, in this little corner, I have a passion fruit vine. I've been growing this for years and years. I set it out in the summer and I let it trail up here um, and it produces flowers. I have not had it produce fruit. It's really funny because I actually thought this tour was going to be like a 20 minute video, but I think I just spent 20 minutes alone on the back, <laughs> on the back garden. Um, yeah, it's a lot of plants, I guess. I hope that seeing a somewhat unconventional and non-traditional garden um, has been enjoyable for someone out there. Uh, certainly, you know, I encourage you to just have fun with planting, experiment, grow things that you love. Uh, growing things that I love has, has really motivated me, kept me motivated, because this is a big project. It's really ambitious to have to water everything every day, especially since we've had a lot of dry weather. Um, but it's kind of a labor of love and like I said earlier at the beginning of the video I really enjoy the stress relief it gives me um, and of course it's just such a beautiful space to spend time in on the weekends like today and uh, yeah so I hope it inspires someone out there you know every year is different I have been successful with different plants every single year so I just do what I can um, and stay open-minded about growing stuff I think what I'll do, especially if people watch this video and enjoy it, is I think I'll come back at the end of the summer around August, late August, early September, kind of show you how everything turned out. A lot of different things should be in bloom then, and I will be harvesting things like tomatoes, hopefully some squash, pumpkins, um, and I'll just kind of let you know what happened and, and let you know what did the best. So in the next month or two, uh, I'll just let things grow and yeah you're welcome back to check back in and and see what happens thank you so much for joining me for this video i hope you enjoyed it hopefully you learned something and uh, i will be back with more videos in the future i don't know when i'm gonna travel again but i have a few more videos planned about some of my other passions which are art history um art history anyway <laughs> i'll see you again very soon take care